Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. This video is a first look at Buildarius Pro. Buildarius is a new site builder for WordPress. It has a strong developer focus and an emphasis on performance. If you like the video, please subscribe. It helps to spread the word about the channel. There's a free version of Buildarius in the WordPress plugin directory. As you can see, it's not at version 1 yet, and there are just a few more than 10 active installs. It's new. This is the Buildarius website where you purchase Pro, Buildarius.io. Currently, it's just $99, but they're a limit to the number of licenses they plan to sell. I think they're having this initial offering because they want to get feedback on the new product. If we look on their website, there's a documentation link, a link to their Facebook community, and their YouTube channel. The docs are pretty good. They have a lot of information here. Some of it's kind of buried away, but it's pretty extensive for a new product. And this is their YouTube channel. So they don't have a huge number of videos, but it seems like what they have is pretty useful. So there's some good learning resources available already. I have a test site here. It has some sample post data and a custom post type called books. Let's go take a look at the themes. I've got the free cadence theme installed at the moment. And here are the plugins. I'm using custom post type UI, advanced custom fields to create the custom post type. I have all in one WP migration for backing up the site. And then I have the free version of Buildarius and the pro version. The pro is one of those plugins where you need the free installed and activated also. When you install Buildarius, you get this menu item here. This is a overview page tells you the templates that you have created and your releases. Talk about these in a minute. It's a link to video and documentation. Activate menu is where you enter your license key. Publish, we'll look at this. This is what you do when you're ready to move a template into production and then a templates page. So let's begin and add a new template. Call this book single. We'll make a template for the book custom post type. And then it says type. You can do singular, other, and collection, which are like archives. Okay, so this is going to be a singular. And then you give it your display rules. Do rules by the template assignment rules in WordPress, by user, by some kind of super globals, multilingual, or device. Let's add a rule. We want a single single post page for a custom post for a book for all books okay we can rename the template by clicking here we can go into the editor which is what we're going to do in a minute can revisit the display rules and you can save changes cancel changes or delete the template so let's go in and edit here we are in the editor. You save here. There's a light dark mode. There's a semi-transparent mode for the panel. You can move the panel to the other side of the screen. You can make the panel larger, smaller. You can go out to the template page in the WordPress admin. You can open the inspector. You can look at the template settings or the global settings. And these are these settings not the display settings. You can view dynamic data. You can open revisions. And remember we said we were editing single books. So a very nice thing is that it gives us a list of books and we can choose one to use for previewing the data. This is pretty standard in most WordPress page builders, but I've started to see some implementations, especially for the full site editor, that are skipping the preview data. So I think it really makes it a lot easier to design and lay out the page when you can see real data. Then you see it says here modules. 
These are the modules we can choose from. There's generic inline, generic block, generic table block, figure with caption, a heading, an SVG time, paragraph, block quote, whatever that is, SAMP, list item, raw HTML, dynamic list, anchor, a regular list, multimedia, source, video, image, a slider, a tippy element, a grid, a summary, accordion, notification, cropper, modal, cookie consent, swiper, e-charts, sliding header, before and after, G light box, fancy toggle, tabs, lottie, pagination, collection, some form field items, template, and then table items. So I think what we want to do is add a generic block, which I think is probably a div. Oh, and you see these little plus signs here? That's a clue that this is a container block. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to name this to, say, content. And this is a div, right? Okay. Then there are data settings and CSS settings. So I want CSS settings. Let's see, I think we want, this would probably be flex and column for size, let's say 70 pixels at the top and bottom, and then auto, auto, and width would be 100. And see, it says pixels, but well, you can just type in what you want and it'll change it there. So I typed a percent size and that changed it. And let's make a max width of 1290 and then like a height let's just so we can see something there 200 pixels okay and it's actually centered on the page because we have the sidebar there that's looking pretty good and you notice there's no back button here what you have instead to navigate is that you click the x okay so i'm here and let's actually just for the heck of it, I'm going to give a little bit of a color there, just something very light so we can see it as we're working and we can remove that later. All right, so now I'm here. I want to add a module. I think this is going to add it inside the container. I want another block and I'll call this one left. And for size, I'd like this one to be let's say 20% and let's give this one a slightly different background color and I think we guess maybe we have to give it some height also again we X here it seems a little awkward but now we want to add another module another generic block and this one I think is going to be right for size, we'll make this one 80%. And let's give that 200 pixels. And let's give that a background color also, just so we can kind of see what we're doing. All right. So then if we go to our content, so here's a question. If I, if I click on it, okay, that does seem to open this, so that's good. So there we go. So now in this module on the left, I'm going to add a module and add an image module. Okay, remember we have a data tab and a CSS tab. So for source, we need to do dynamic data. So remember we're trying to do a single book. So click that and then this shows the query. Bill Darius uses something called GraphQL. There is some information about that in the Bill Darius documentation and they have a number of examples there also about how to create your own queries. So that can be useful as you dive into it more and want or need some custom queries. Back to the builder. Here's featured image. It says copy unescaped, copy escaped, or copy raw. I'm gonna guess escaped. 
and then paste it in here. Is that right? That gives an error. Let's look here. Oh no, okay, my bad. So there's that. And now let's go to the CSS sizing. And I think I want the width to be about maybe 180 pixels and the height to be maybe 260. And now I can make these larger. I'm gonna close this, go here to settings, size, max height. If I clear this, is it just going to Yeah, that's what I was wondering if I clear those. Is it just going to take the content? All right. Now in the right side, let's add a module, a heading, and go to data. Get rid of that. And let's find the title in here. There it is. I think I want unescaped. Yep. And then add a module under that, I guess maybe paragraph, and let's add escaped there and paste that in. Oops, see I have the paragraph mark showing, so I think I need unescaped. Let's try that again. All right, here on the heading, is it an H1? Yep, okay. There we go. This is all one paragraph apparently, but I think it's really multiple paragraphs. Let's see, data settings, it was post content. Let's see, let's go to global settings. Let's see how we can create a style sheet. Code snippets, hmm. label, site styles. And then I want to give paragraphs, margin, bottom, 15px. So I really think that's multiple paragraphs. Let's try a different. Yeah, see, these are multiple paragraphs. And they're all in there as one. Maybe it's because I picked paragraph. I'm dumping that. And I'm going right, add module. And what am I going to put? A div? Raw HTML maybe? Content. There we go. Now we see multiple paragraphs. We can go back to that one we're looking at before. Yep, you see there were multiple paragraphs. So I chose wrong choosing a paragraph for that. Let's go to the right side and let's give that some padding here, 20, 20. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Can I center this image going here? to layout, flex, and this is a column, align items, center. All right, align items, center. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is add some custom fields in here. Let me show you the book records have two custom fields. There's a URL link to the author's website and there's an author's photo. So we want to add these. Let's just take a look and see how we're doing so far on the front end. So that looks exactly like that. So I think we're doing okay in that regard. So now I need to add these custom fields. If I add another image here, I don't see the custom fields here. So I think we're gonna need to add those somehow to our query. So I learned there is some information in the documentation on how to add an ACF field to the query. Let's go to the docs. 
settings, data variables, posts and pages, and then down near the bottom, how to get values from ACF custom fields. And so basically what we do is this is an alias. And then we use this function, ACF value, name, colon, and then the name of the field in quotes. So if we go back into build Darius, we've added another image tag here, but the problem is the ACF image field option isn't showing here. So what I learned we need to do the way to edit, I'm just going to save that, is let's go to the template settings. And here we can edit the data variables for the template. And this is our query. And so this is exactly what that looked like. Okay, and let's see, in the example here, we need to add, just copy this. And then under this, we'll add a custom field. Now let's go look at the ACF field names. So the author's photo is called authors underscore photo. So I'll use that here as the alias. And here's the field name. And then I think I want to go ahead and get the URL to the author's website while we're at it. So I should have just duplicated that, but let's copy it again. And this one is called author's website. So let's do that. Hmm. I don't see a save. So let's try update. Okay. So if we've done this correctly, we got an X out of that. Let's go to this module settings, the image. We'll go to the option to get the custom field information to get the dynamic data. And here's author's photo. So based on what we learned with the featured image, I think we're going to need the URL probably. An escaped URL maybe. Let's put that in and see. Aha, great. There it is. Fantastic. Okay, so let's go from the data settings to the CSS settings. And at the top, I'll give it some margin. And then for the size, the height and width, let's make it 100 pixels by 100 pixels. Below this, let's go to add module. I add a button. And I guess anchor is what Bill Darius provides. So we'll go with that. And click me. We'll say visit author's website. I like how it gives you dynamic data options for both. Then let's go here and let's check this. Okay. So we've got our custom fields. I guess we can get rid of the background here, or maybe we can make it a very light gray. That's even too dark. Let's go to this one, run CSS, background, and I think we can just remove that. And let's go to our container. I can remove that. All right, let's go and save and go to the front end and see what we have. Let's go here, go to books. This is the default cadence theme archive, but let's go look at our single record. And here's our single record. And does this link work? Yes. Okay, good. So there's a single book record created using Buildarius. I'm curious now to see what the source looks like. Here's the anchor for the link to the author's website. Here's the image. 
Here's the post title. So other than some classes, there really isn't extra output here. It's very lean. So that's good to see. So now that we've got our template, the next step is to publish it. You may think site visitor coming to the website would see this, but they don't. This is development mode, production mode. What site visitors would see is this, which is the default cadence template for a single post type. So this means that you can work on your site in developer mode and site visitors still see the production version. Let's go back to the developer version. Let's go now to Buildarius and there's this option now to publish. It does it as releases like using Git or something like that where you have, you know, release numbers. Well, you can do that with your website with Buildarius. So let's create our release. I think some people use numbers. I'm going to use book single done. Some people might put version one or something there. And let's proceed. These are the things that are going to be included. Remember I added that style for the paragraph in the global settings and then our template for book single. Single book template done. You have the option, you can publish it or you can create the release but kind of not push it yet. But let's just publish it. Here now you have the option to export the release where well, you can download it. So here's the import button. You can unpublish it, you can extract it. If you can clear the cache, I guess that would be for your developer version. If we go to the home page and to our book record, if we go to production mode, we see the same thing. Okay, so it's been released. Now, there's a difference between here, where you see the header and footer in our individual book record is that there is no header and footer. This is something I think the Buildarius team is working on. But no, when we go to create a new template, we can create it for pages, posts, custom post types, front page, for an error page, or for like an archive. But there's no option here to create a header and footer or, you know, a global template part that would automatically be applied. That's something that they're working on, I believe. We go to the editor and go out of module settings to modules. There is a template option. So maybe you could create a header template and a footer template and then include those above and below. But that would be a little cumbersome to do that for each of your templates. So I think we need the global option there. You know, you see all of these modules, these features here, such as the inspector, the CSS inspector. I've really barely scratched the surface of Buildarius, but I think what we have here is a sufficient uh, overview to give you an idea of where it stands today. So now that we've kind of had a walkthrough look, let's have some discussion and conclusions. Buildarius has been under development for some time. I looked at an early beta version and was pretty lost. But with the official release version, I was able to create the single custom post type template after checking out the documentation and watching a video in their YouTube channel. I did get help on how to add the ACF custom fields to the template query as I missed that in the documentation. I found the developer was very helpful and I've seen users getting help quickly in the Baldarius Facebook group also. There were all of the basic and most of the advanced CSS options users would need built into the editor. I imagine they will add more modules over time. I liked the use and flexibility of GraphQL, the query language for getting data for the template. This way you can just get the fields you need. Even many advanced WordPress builders don't give you that level of control over the query. 
as we saw the front end output is optimized and very lean with no bloat. And the idea of releases closely follows the way developers work. They provide a strong revision system built into the WordPress admin and a basis for saving code in your source code management system. I did find the navigation between settings and the module layout list to be a bit clunky. Needing to click the X so often to close the settings display felt odd. The main lack for me though was that there's no way currently to create and manage global headers and footers. On the plus side, I didn't run into any bugs, which was surprising for new software. A strength of Buildarius is the vision of the development team. It's meant to appeal to power users and developers. It's not meant for non-technical users. And that decision avoids much of the dual personality tension that many builders have when they try to appeal to both experts and newbies. My understanding is that the team eventually plans to add the ability to create Gutenberg blocks with Buildarius, and that would be interesting and useful for sites that rely on a lot of custom post types and custom data. Buildarius may not be ready for creating production sites yet due to the missing global template features, but I can see Buildarius as it develops as being of interest to technically minded site builders who want a lot of control and great performance. So that's my first look at Buildarius. There's a text version of the video available on the WebTNG website, along with other walkthroughs, reviews, and resources. I hope you found this look at Buildarius interesting and useful. Thank you for watching.